Hi, I'm Sportster Paul here with the Analog Diet Week 6. I found a movie back from 2011 where I weighed 325 pounds. Check it out. Here we are, 325, a new personal best. Back then, I'm a, oh, I'm 173 now. I got three more pounds to get to my goal of 170. Back then, I was size 50 pants. Now I'm 34. I had diabetes, high blood pressure, heartburn, all that's cured. And my shirts went from XXXL to just L. And about three years ago, I lost most of the weight. Now I've bounced back. 20 extra pounds three times, from 170 to 190. Over these three years, it seems like I always creep up. Hopefully this is the last time, because I creep up because I cheat. I stop weighing myself every day. I start adding a little more cheese to this lunch bowl we're gonna make. And I start eating nuts and cheese at nighttime. Worst time to eat, right? Nine, 10 o'clock. So this time, hopefully, you know, when we do a couple more episodes, we'll get down to 170. And then we'll shift from the analog diet diet, which is this 1100 calories a day to the analog diet lifestyle where I do eat nuts and cheese and get up to the 1500, 2000 calories a day. And we'll see how that works. Now it's the analog diet because it's not extreme. It's not all vegetables like vegan. It's not all meat like Atkins. It's like, it's not no carbs like keto. It's a blend of those three macronutrients. Carbs, but only in vegetables and lots of vegetables. That's the base for all of this. Uh, and then the vegetables slow down the blood sugar rises. You don't get insulin spikes. That doesn't trigger cholesterol, at least in my opinion, that's what triggers cholesterol. So my blood works great. Everything's fantastic. Uh, the protein, that's for muscle wasting, especially an older guy. So a balance of carbs, protein, and then fats, which used to be the never eat any fat. Well, fat satisfies you, takes a long time to digest, and is another macronutrient that the analog diet tries to balance out. So three more pounds to go. We're 173. I'll show you the uh, little spreadsheet that I'm keeping track of this. I'll put this on the website that I linked to in the, in the description below. <clears throat> the uh, I had a real salty meal that I made for you folks in one of, the, one of the episodes with pastrami. And I predicted that, oh, this pastrami is gonna slow down my weight loss. Sure enough, I was the same weight for six days in a row after that pastrami. Then the salt kind of cleared out of my system and I dropped a bunch. And we're on track. We're trying to lose 10 pounds a month. Uh, yeah, 10 pounds a month, 20 pounds in two months. Now I should say week six, my weeks are eight days long because I make these big bowls. I make four of them that last two days each. So my week is eight days long. And then I go to the grocery store. So this is 48 days instead of 45 days, you know, at six, week six, but still great progress. Today, we're going to make our lunch bowl with vegetables, ham, slather that with gravy, and then a whole bunch of Parmesan cheese on top. And that big bowl will last two days, today and tomorrow. So let's get to that. Okay, we're gonna start with the vegetables, chopping those all up. This is what I call the upper shelf. Here's a picture of my fridge, the upper shelf stuff. Mushrooms that I leave open so they don't go bad. Uh, alfalfa sprouts. I usually get broccoli sprouts because they tend to last better. Alfalfa sprouts, well, we'll see if they last all eight days. I'll let you know. And then cilantro. I love cilantro ever since living in Silicon Valley, California. So while we get this, let me get a knife. So while we're cutting this, I want to mention that 1,100 calories a day. So, so this meal will be about, you know, 1,000, 1,100, but this is two days. So that's about 500 calories there. And then every day I make the same breakfast, pretty much the same. Here's a, a picture of that omelet that I make. Sometimes I put, I think today I put cheese on it. Uh, some days I use sour cream. That's the fat part that satisfies me from 
8 in the morning until 2.30, about now. And then after that, I have uh, a coffee, big five cups of decaf coffee, because I have that at, you know, four or five o'clock. Here, we're going to split this. Since this has to go the four meals, I try to take about a fourth of it. And since it is alfalfa sprouts tend to go bad faster than broccoli sprouts, I'll use a lot of them. Here's the cilantro. I get about a fourth of this. I get two sprigs. And then part of the analog diet is weighing, measuring, counting. So we're going to get this little cup, put it on our scale, zero out the scale, take this cilantro, and you don't have to be so precise like I'm doing. It's just, I kind of enjoy 20 grams. The other vegetables, around 35 if, if, if they go fast enough, but things like cauliflower, I have to do 74 grams because I got to get rid of that whole package in eight days, otherwise it goes bad. So 20 grams of cilantro. Let's get this. And we're going to get this. Chop this up. Can you see some of the bowl here where it's going into? Get my Ginsu knife. I'll put links down below to my buddy's Amazon affiliate account if you want to help him out. Okay, so that's that. Now we'll take these back and we'll go to get the upper shelf. And here's a picture of the upper shelf stuff that we're going to grab. It's all the loose bags. I shop at Publix down here in Florida. And these loose bags are for the separate vegetables. So I'm going to cut these up. And while I do that, let's go over the previous meals. Every time I chop a batch of vegetables, we'll discuss the three other meals. So the first one, hang on, is uh, about a week ago, I made tilapia stroganoff, poor man stroganoff, which is a fourth of a cup of sour cream and a can of Campbell's cream of mushroom condensed soup stirred up. That's stroganoff for me. So check this out. All right, like most mornings, a big vegetable omelet, 12 different vegetables, chop it up, add some reverse osmosis water, then that toss that in the frying pan that's been heating while I chop the vegetables. So that starts boiling down, cooking. Meanwhile, I get two large eggs and some evaporated milk. I add them to a one cup measuring cup and then top the milk off to it's exactly a half a cup. Meanwhile, the vegetables are cooking. I'm stirring the eggs, getting stuff scrambled. Uh, I have to kind of herd the, the vegetables towards the middle of this pan. It's a little high in the middle. I have a bunch of uh, spices that I use on the omelet pepper, curry powder, cinnamon, and oregano. I get those at the ready. Then butter the pan where the egg is going to be. Pour the egg. You can see that. I've pulled the vegetables towards me. Uh, spices over on the right. Then take the vegetables, pile them up in the middle of that. I only spice the right-hand side so that the left-hand side is a little sticky. Fold the right-hand side over. Fold the left-hand side over. Pat it down so it sticks. And there's the omelet as it comes out of the pan. Really good, really appetizing, piping hot, full of vegetables. So then I add sour cream today and some Bookbinders horseradish sauce. It's sassy. That's 409 calories. Now, for lunch today, I decided to have some tilapia. So I weigh that out, but you... <sighs> Until it's all dried, it's not a valid weight. So take the plastic pouches, drop them in some water, run just some normal room temperature water, get that starting to thaw. Then I'm chopping vegetables. Meanwhile, I come back, cut the plastic bags off, put it back, freshen the water up a little so it's a little bit warmer. Then I get the tilapia out, put it on paper towel, dry it really good, squeeze it with my hands just before I put it on the paper towel, get all the water out of it. Then today I decided to just cut them in half long way and arrange that on the plate. So that goes in the microwave. Meanwhile, I'm chopping the vegetables. So I'm finishing up the vegetables here, getting those all chopped. 
for the lunch. This is 21 different vegetables like we're doing down below. The tilapia comes out of the microwave. I made a note this time, 2.25 minutes. I had it in there and it seemed to do the job. It seemed to be getting cooked enough. Then 335 grams, now is when I weigh it to do the calculation for how many calories it's going to be. I break it up with my fingers. It was a little undercooked in places, but since I'm going to cook this bowl again, and I like sushi anyway, I figured to live with it. Now stroganoff, it's an odd thing. I just thought I'd try this. For me, that's poor man stroganoff, a quarter cup of sour cream, and this can of cream of mushroom soup. Stir that up in the container, ladle that out. You can see it's a ton. It's a very thick and heavy sauce. So I've got that. I forgot to put the uh, green beans and the celery. So, uh, oh, oh, didn't do one bad couple of vegetables. So I added that on top, unusually. And then stir it up like we're going to stir down below today. Uh, 12 digs, go around twice, digging up six times each time, get it stirred. Then do the weighing that we're going to do to split this into today's and tomorrow's meal. Look at how much food, same portions, look how much food is in that small bowl. So a massive amount of food. Then here's the food waste. I used to throw it in the garbage. Now I've learned throw it in the freezer and freeze it until garbage day. I go do the microwave, four sessions, two, three minutes each. Here it is coming out of the microwave, piping hot, just incredibly hot. So I've been tallying up the calories for all this as I go. It's 1,022 for the whole bowl, 512 calories a day. So with that figured out, I then, until maybe 5, 6 o'clock, I have a coffee with a whole cup of milk. That's 150 calories. So total 409, 511, and 150. That's 1,007 calories for this day, and I'm losing weight. All right, so that's the upper shelf with the bagged vegetables. I get these, take the asparagus, leave the asparagus open so that it uh, doesn't go bad if I leave it in the bag. You can see from that picture how uh, I set the asparagus in last and leave the tips uncovered. Keeps them fresh. Now the middle shelf. Uh, here's that picture. We've got a bunch of bagged vegetables. Just a coincidence, no real rhyme or reason to any of this. Let's see if I can pull this off. All right, back. We got a bunch of clips from Publix. And All right, while we cut this up, let's talk about the meal I had second, the middle meal of these three previous meals, which was pork Alfredo. So we'll go over that while I chop these vegetables up. All right, same 12 vegetables. Vegetables are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates make glucose that run your brain. You don't want to be grumpy, so eat your carbs. Add that reverse osmosis water like I did before. Uh, meanwhile, the pan's been heating while, I, while I've chopped these vegetables, so toss them in the pan. They're cooking nice. This is my OXO pan. I replaced the scan pan that I used to have. It just got worn out after four years. The nonstick coating gave way, so this one's working great. Decided instead of sour cream and 409 calories, today I would have cheese, which weighs out if I cut them thin enough to 449 calories for the total omelet. So no aged reserves. There's pandemic shortages, third wave, I guess. So I got this uh, cheddar type cheese, this yellow cheese. Same four spices. I'm OCD. I'm in a rut, right? So the pepper, the curry powder, the cinnamon, and the oregano. I put those on the right side of the omelet. I hope you follow that. So put the vegetables in the middle, then the spices get folded over on the right, and then the left side of the omelet's still a little sticky because it's not covered with spices. There that is. So uh, pile the vegetables in the middle like I did in the previous episode here, fold it over, and then while it's still in the pan, I figure that's when to put the cheese on it. So I get my six slices of cheese, cut real thin, and pile that on top and it's starting to melt already. There's a lot of vegetables in there and they're very hot from cooking all this time. So once I get that uh, started, it's not this new pan. It's easy to slip the omelet off of the pan and onto the plate. This time I chose a hot sauce my friend Alan Martin sent me from Trader Joe's. It's okay. It's not bad. And then my bookbinders, sassy 
horseradish sauce, which I love. So two stripes of that horseradish sauce. 449 calories. Now for the dinner or for the lunch, the 230 meal, pork, weighed out the pork, 334 grams, still in the plastic wrap, right? It's frozen. It comes pork tenderloin unthawed but, or thawed out, but then I freeze it. I wrap it up and freeze it. So it'll keep and I don't have to worry about that. Spread the frozen ones, take the plastic off, take, spread them out on a plate, wrap some paper towels so it doesn't spatter the inside of my microwave, put it in, I think for two, mi uh, I'm sorry, two minutes. And after two minutes, it comes out of the microwave. I'm cooking vegetables while it's, while it's doing its two minutes. Here it is, you can see a little cooked on the ends, but pretty much thawed out completely. And rather than thin slices, I figured, well, let's try this time to just cut each of these pork tenderloins in half the long way. So here it is laid off. Oh, I can see, I made a note, three minutes. So after three minutes, uh, it was thawed. Now this is three minutes going in, right? So it's just been cooked once so far. I cooked it, if I remember right, another three minutes, six minutes total, and this is how it came out. Yeah, you can see, two notes, three minutes each. The two top ones are still a little raw. Those went back in for a minute or two. Meanwhile, the other ones, I took and piled those up on the scale, my waist scale, and the 334 grams went to 237 grams. And that's what I'm going to use to calculate the calories, because a lot of fat stays on that plate and gets washed down the drain. So that's going to be the basis for the calories. I take the, the strips, I cut them longwise once again, then dice them up into cubes. I have this thing about I just like every spoon uh, of, of the meal to have some protein in it, pork, fish, whatever it is. So I get them all diced up, then take that, sprinkle that on top of the vegetables. They're all cut by now after the cooking and stuff get that going, get that spread around, maybe push it down a little if it's uh, a little too fluffy and it's going to spill out the top. Then today it's going to be Alfredo. I'm not making the same meal twice for all 30 meals we're going to make over the 60 days of this two-month journey. So this time they were out of Bertoli's, which is the brand I like, pandemic shortages, so I got Classico. And interestingly, it's thinner, which is one reason I don't like it, but it's also lower calorie. So I took a snapshot of the back. You got to start reading labels and calculating. I do three quarters of a cup. And so this worked out to be 180 calories versus the 210 that Bertoli Alfredo, usually mushroom Alfredo, garlic Alfredo, one of those. So here it is with all stirred up, you know, the, the three quarters of a cup of sauce poured on it. Then I go around, dig, 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 and get it all stirred up, get the pork stirred in, get the Alfredo stirred in. It mixes nice. Then I do the trick you're going to see later in this show where I measure out the, the weight and divide it exactly in two. And the smaller bowl that we're going to put in the refrigerator for the next day, it's a massive amount of food, right? There's hundreds and hundreds of grams of vegetables and that's helps fill you up along with the fats so then into the microwave four sessions two minutes maybe three minutes each here it is come out of the microwave piping hot because the pork is a little fatty the alfredo is a little fatty i didn't add cheese to this i used to when i was cheating and that's why i gained 20 pounds over the last year here's the spreadsheet so a thousand and two calories for the whole bowl 501 calories for the day. So add that to the lunch, 449. So that's 230. Meanwhile, right around 4, 5, 6 o'clock, I make some decaf coffee, five cups, add an entire cup of whole milk. I don't watch cholesterol on this diet because I don't have insulin spikes. I don't have cholesterol problems. So get the coffee going. I drink about half of it. Then add ice, top it off with ice, and have iced coffee. So that's 150 calories because of the milk. So 449 breakfast, 501 lunch, 150. That's 1,100 calories exactly, and I'm losing another bit of weight. All right, those are the bagged vegetables from the middle shelf. Let's stack these up. I leave the broccoli on top because that's what I have at breakfast. So that was the middle shelf. 
this one here. So now we're going to get a couple of bags from the bottom shelf. There's that picture, celery and green beans. And then the top shelf stuff, peas, garlic. Uh, I think I'm going to make two trips because I don't want to drop this stuff. And olives. Looks like we got just enough olives. So that's the, the top shelf business. <clears throat> Here, let's start with the bottom shelf. I just put two things there because who wants to bend over picking stuff up from the bottom shelf all day long? So green beans. Unfortunately, I can't keep green beans fresh over eight days. So a fourth of this bag has to go in, which is an immense amount of green beans, 84 grams. While I do this, let's talk about the meal I just had last, which is scallops with clam chowder. And boy, was that a great meal. I'm not going to have the same meal once during these 60 days, these 30 different meals. So let's look at that. I'll get this cut up. So same cheese omelet, 449, and jump ahead to lunch, scallops. Love these scallops. They're frozen Patagonian, the smaller ones. That uh, not sea scallops, which are these big giant things. So these Patagonian scallops, they come frozen from Publix. I spread them out on the Corel Ware plate and they're hard frozen. So get them spread out pretty thin. Then take some paper towels, wrap the paper towels around it so it doesn't spatter. Put it in the microwave. Because they're pretty heavy and they are frozen solid, I put them in for three minutes. That thaws them, but it does not cook them. The middle ones are still frozen, you can feel. So I just kind of go by hand and move the frozen ones out to the edge, move the more warmer ones into the center, put it in for another three minutes. You can see the little note I made. There's another three minutes that it's gone in and ready to go. So we went from 397 frozen so then when we weigh it again, and this is what we're going to use for the calories, exactly 300 grams. And that's what I'll multiply out for to get the calories for the protein part of this. Meanwhile, I've cut all the vegetables, 21 vegetables, spread the scallops on top of the vegetables, and it just paves the top of this big bowl. So scallops with every spoonful. That's what I like. Once again, pandemic shortages, Campbell's, cream, uh, Campbell's clam chowder, gone. But there was this Bar Harbor. It is condensed. They have both types. I managed to find some condensed Bar Harbor. It's got more calories. You know, I, I checked calories. It's got 280 versus 225. But it's a bigger can. It's kind of watery. Uh, I don't know. I'll go back to Campbell's, I think. Six of one, half a dozen, as long as you're measuring and keeping track of it. So here it is all stirred up, right? I got the vegetables and the clam chowder and the scallops all stirred together. Do the same trick, weighing everything out. You can see that close bowl, that small bowl, is just a massive amount of food. You're really satisfied from 2.30 all the way until the evening. Uh, since I wasn't sure, I didn't. there weren't chunks of potatoes in this one. It was more a ground up kind of thing. I checked the ingredients and yeah, there's potatoes, which is kind of a cheat. I really don't want to eat too many starchy carbohydrates, but I make an exception for this. Here's the, I thought I'd take a snap of the, of the calories and nutrition for both cans just to convince myself I'm not going crazy. Uh, then go in the microwave, four sessions, three minutes, then two minutes for three more times. Get it piping hot. It's a delicious hot meal, really satisfies. All the time I've been keeping track of the calories and how much stuff I'm adding. So here you can see the clam chowder. It's 280 instead of 225 with the Campbell's. 951 for one day, 476 calories. Come 4 or 5 o'clock, decaf coffee. Big five cup with one cup of whole milk. That's 150 calories. So then about halfway through, you know, I'll spend an hour sipping the first half, then make iced coffee. So for this day, 449 breakfast, 476 lunch, 150 for the coffee, 1,075 calories, losing a little more weight today. All right, so I'm going to wash that a little bit. Let's get these back. 
I forgot the clamp for the celery. That does get clamped up for... Can I carry all this? Yeah, because I got rid of one of the cans. So... That's the upper shelf, the green beans. I have to leave down in the lower shelf. You'll see it here. I have to leave the bag open or they really go bad. The celery I can clamp shut. You probably can see that clamp in there. Close that. All righty. Now, forget the most important thing, the protein and the fats, right? This is the balance. So protein at the deli at Publix, I got some ham. And then for gravy, they don't make pork gravy that would be suitable for ham. They make beef, chicken, and turkey. It is going to be Thanksgiving in a couple of days. Let's do turkey because it's Thanksgiving coming up. I just had turkey on something. So here's the Publix Boar's Head Lower Sodium. I tend to not eat a lot of salt. It's in the sauces, you know, salt's everywhere, right? Because that's how you make stuff taste good. So I asked for one slice, but they gave me two. Oh, I forgot, let's weigh it real quick. I'm getting discombobulated. You notice the garlic I had to buy a, a jar of minced because 304 grams, that's gonna work out pretty good. So I make a note of this because we're going to tally all this up at the end, 304 grams. All right, so we got that written down. Let's get back to work here. And like I say, this, this meal will have 1,100, 1,200 calories, but then we only, we're going to split it in two, eat half today, half tomorrow. So with the four, 450 calories in breakfast and 150 calories in the coffee that I have in evenings, that will be about 1,100 calories, which is plenty for a six foot person to lose weight. There's an immense amount of protein here, right? Now this time I'm gonna kind of remember to spread the bowl out, can you see that? And push it down a little, because the vegetables are fresh and when I stir it up, I don't want too much spilling. Sprinkle a ham on top. Distribute that. This is a new jar of gravy we've got, so we're going to have to get the measuring cup and mess up the measuring cup. Here that is. Get a little of that ham off of my fingers. Oh, we're probably going to need this anyway. Yep. So this is <laughs> Heinz Homestyle Gravy in honor of Thanksgiving. We're having turkey gravy and Ham, what could be more Thanksgiving? So then take this, patiently pour out. I think there's about two cups in this jar. You think I should read it after all these years? What is it? Quarter cup, nine servings, a little more than two cups. Quarter cup with nine servings. This, I've masked out, you know, you get four, four quarter cups, one cup, that's a hundred calories. So not a lot of calories. That's why we're going to be able to put Parmesan cheese on this afterwards. We'll do that after we've heated this up. We, we do that uh, at the end. So here's that gravy spread out, spread out. This goes back in the thing. We can take this bowl back in the thing. We got our palm olive ultra in a shampoo bottle squirt bottle. I'm going to go put this back in the fridge. I'm big on food safety, right? Don't leave stuff out getting warm. And now let's see. We're going to go around twice, six digs each time. And digging the dry stuff from the bottom is important, but the real thing is these stabbing motions. That's what seems to do better for me at least. You can stir it any way you want. It is analog, right? I don't want to be strict. Oh, you got to have it just like this. I make 20, I think it's 21 different vegetables every single day. Every spoonful is a different taste, different flavor. That's the way I like to vary things. You're just as welcome to just pick two or three vegetables and make the whole bowl 
with, you know, just carrots and broccoli that day and use them all up in one sitting. Although the broccoli, well, I use the broccoli in the breakfast omelets too. So you got to figure that out. So I think this is six. I kind of lost count. Can't talk and think at the same time, I guess. So let's go on one more time. Getting this dry stuff from the bottom. Now the, the gravy's starting to come up. And of course the ham's getting. There are some nice dry alfalfa sprouts. I prefer alfalfa sprouts. That's all they had at Publix. It, it's, uh, like I said, Thanksgiving week of the pandemic. Or no, what is it? Today is Sunday. So Thanksgiving week is coming up. And uh, I think that's good enough, okay? Um, so there's some shortages, like the garlic you saw. I, I didn't get the fresh garlic like I like. Same company, Spice World. Just got a big jar of minced garlic and figure I'll use that in the, in the egg omelet in the morning. Let us clean our hands off again. Zero the scale out. Now we're going to split this in two. Two meals. So note the weight, 2,976 grams. Get the calculator out. It's a technical, technical worker's meal. 2,976 grams. Subtract the weight of the bowl, minus 1513 equals. That's the amount of food. Divide that in two, because that's the whole point of this. 731. Then add the weight of the bowl back in. 1513. 2244.5. So rounding rules means 2244. That's how much weight we want to end up with on this scale. So get the small bowl. Get the big bowl. Be very patient, right? Just let it at a slight angle for a while. If you don't want to pick it up off the, the floor, same reason, push this in. Don't do that, what I just did. Almost spill it. Make a guess. Oh, that's too much, probably. Let's see how we did. 22.51. Oh, pretty close. Dig a little more. 22.42. Within two grams, that's certainly close enough. Clean this up. A couple fell here. Clean that up. Clean this, get the top. It's again, food safety. Don't leave this out where bacteria falls on it from the air, even with your fancy air filters and all this other stuff. I'll do the Parmesan at the end. So then here, you can shake it. You can stir it a little more if you're worried about having it uniform. It's not that important because you're going to stir it. We're going to heat it in four, a three minute session and then three more two minute sessions to get this nice and hot. Alrighty. And we get this. Now let's go over to the microwave. We'll set that up. All right. All right. Let's go over to the microwave here. Put this in the microwave. Kick the camera while we're doing it. Close it. Set it to three minutes. And get this to set the lids on to keep track of how many times we've heated it up. All right. So today's three minute topic while this cooks for three minutes is going to be about an insidious thing you have to avoid called delegating your weight loss. Don't do that. I watched my father do this to my mom. My mom was slender. My dad was always overweight. So he would say, honey, you got to help me lose weight. And my mom would measure and do all this stuff and watch. But meanwhile, when she wasn't around, when he was at work, oh, he'd go to lunch, have a drink, eat, overeat, eat candy from the candy machine. And, and the psychology of that is, see, you've delegated your weight loss to someone else. When you fail, as you sure are going to fail because you're setting yourself up to fail, it's not your fault. You can't find good people. The wife or the spouse. He or she is supposed to get your weight loss under control. Can't do that. Same thing with finances. You can't say, oh, you take care of my finances, whether it's a financial advisor or a spouse. You've got to take responsibility for your health. You can't say, oh, the doctor's going to worry about everything. You're the first one that has to worry. So you can't delegate away your weight loss, whether that's to Jenny Craig or to me or to anyone else. You've got to get through those five stages of food grief we talked about in one of the episodes and get to the acceptance of the fact that
that you have agency and that you're the one that can take charge and you're the one that can watch the food. That's why I recommend you make your own meals. You don't have a spouse make the meal for you and then it's just like fast food, right? So taking care of things in a way that, it, that makes you ultimately responsible. You can get all the help you want. It's good, of course, if your spouse is watching their weight at the same time or accepts these same principles of the analog diet. But it's like the psychology, there should be a, what is it, Al-Anon for those spouses of alcoholics? There should be something like that for Overeaters Anonymous as well, for either enabling, like when my dad had a stroke, then my mom was like, well, he's had a stroke and let him have his sugar and, you know, kind of give up, get into that depression as a joint custody kind of thing. Can't do that, right? You got to watch, just like I bounced these three times, you got to watch constantly. You're fighting constantly. It is like an addiction. Uh, This delegating, I saw a friend do this, had millions of dollars from working in Silicon Valley for all the right companies. He paid a financial advisor 3% of his millions to manage that money and invest it for him. But he knew more about investing than any person I've met. That way, if it went down, he could blame the financial advisor. It's a way of avoiding fault. It's not my fault. It's the person I delegated. Don't do that. Okay, we got our three minutes cooked. Let's go here. Take the lid off, slap it down, go get the spoon. Then just once around, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Get it down, I keep a little pad down, just figure less heat goes into the glass floor, glass tray. Back in, now we'll just do two minutes. Okay, so. Two minute topic, supplements. I do take them. I take, as an old guy, Centrum Silver. Multi- I just saw that article, oh, it's no good. It's all these epidemiological things where they study people and computer program, you know, what the results are. This is taking responsibility too. You can't trust all those studies. I take glucosamine. When I was much younger, I wanted to finger pick the guitar. My nails were weak. I wanted to do it with my natural nails, see if that was possible, right? Trim them just right. And so I started taking glucosamine decades ago, and I noticed it made my nails harder and thicker and tougher. So now I don't care about, I'm not finger picking the guitar. I care about my knee joints and the cartilage in my knees. So I take two, three of these, and then what I don't have a picture of, oh, I'm, I'm the classic old person. You know, I got the, the thing to divide it out. Um, St. John's wort, and I just happen to be between bottles right now, so I couldn't show you one. They say, you can read up on it, it has legitimate ability to ease anxiety and depression. And I used to think I might get depressed and not get stuff done I wanted to, but I think more it was anxiety. Oh, all the stuff, if you're creative, right? All the stuff that's going to go wrong. So I take St. John's wort, about 900 milligrams of that. I'm not passionate about it, but here's what to worry about. I read these people who take massive amounts of supplements, your body sees that as an attack, right? It's way too much of anything. It triggers an immune response, and that triggers inflammation. And then the inflammation is exactly what you don't want. So like anything, it's analog. Maybe a little is okay, but there's too much. So watch out for that. All right, let's go get this spun around. We got one ring on the towel. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two more minutes. Two. Okay, Th- that last topic I did also want to mention. There's a thing this trainer buddy of mine talked about, micronutrients. Things are not even sure they understand how it helps you. That's why I do all the different vegetables. I do beets, nice red vegetable, if they would stay fresh, but I can't keep them fresh. 
So these micronutrients, maybe that's what the supplement helps. You know, I don't think it hurts if you don't take too many. So that's my attitude. Now, the next two-minute topic, we kind of alluded to this before. Small plates make the food look bigger. They've got studies. It's real psychology, right? If you've got a big, giant plate, put a little bit of food on it, you don't think you've had as much as the exact same amount of food on a tiny plate whether it's ice cream or a meal. And then I'm in the danger zone now. Let me show you here. I sent off to Costco when the analog diet diet's over and the analog diet lifestyle starts, unsalted nuts. I got three, I got two mixed nuts and three cashews. Unsalted, because when I tried salted nuts, even in moderation, my blood pressure went up. So I learned about this and this is a great, we, we talked about how willpower uh, fat people have willpower because we keep eating even though we're dying. It's killing us. I'm trying to steer that willpower. I've never had all these nuts sitting here for two days, and they're going to be here about a week or two before we get down to 170. So the trick I've learned is you don't take, this used to be my downfall, take the whole jar of ice cream, take that whole can, go over to where I you know, work on the computer or watch TV or whatever, and just start while kind of distracted, just just constantly eating till they're stuffed. I learned this little bowl, right? Fill this up, and it looks like so, the bowl's overflowing with nuts. But then what I failed when this 20 pound bounce that I had the last year, what I failed, I stopped weighing myself every day, because I didn't want that bad news, so cheating one. I added a lot of extra cheese and stuff to the meal, cheating two. And I didn't weigh and understand. I was eating almost 1,000 calories of nuts every day. Let's go finish this off. One more cook. We got two rings here, which means one more ring. I call this the tally, tally, T-A-L-L-Y, the tally towel, because three, four, five, six. It's tallying how many times? Get it off. See? See, this is about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and you're making two meals, so that's like 20 minutes a day it averages for the main meal. Two more minutes. Okay, the last two minute topic, fat and insulin resistance. I got a young buddy, I kind of mentored him, and just like you'd hoped, the student became the teacher. He taught me about making YouTube videos, among other things, and he taught me about modern theories on how fat cells distributed to our muscles, that's what is contributing to insulin resistance, which is the whole first cascading stage of adult onset diabetes, which I had. My A1C was 9 point, I don't know, let's say 9.4 or 5. Now it's 4.8. It's under 5. Maybe it's 4.6. I should look it up. So, he explained to me, it's like, no, when you got all this fat, and I didn't think my legs were fat till I lost all this weight, and I could tell how much they shrank. All that fat marbled into your muscles, that's what keeps the insulin from getting to the cells, to the muscle cells, to regulate the, the sugar and, and, and give you insulin effectiveness. So it's not just that trainer buddy. People think that, oh, what's un unattractive is the subcutaneous fat, the fat that hangs out here, the man's beer belly, right? Well, actually, he explained your body, your torso fills with fat first. It gets all inside you. And then only when there's no more to add, because your rib cage won't let it, it starts going out on the other side of your stomach wall. So you've got this fat distributed all through you. Yeah, it's got those problems I talked about, just getting up out of the chair and being lazy and not wanting to move. And it's got a lot of blood vessels and heart effects because of all the blood vessels that that fat tissue has. It also seems to contribute to insulin resistance. So a lot of reasons to get rid of that. Okay, this is it. So now we take this, we take our tally towel, which has three rings, which means we're done. Can you see this? Rip it in half, use it as a pot holder because cloth pot holders have bacteria. You come over here. All right. So now we're gonna set up and show you finishing this meal off. Be back in a flash. All right, here we go. We've got our little pot holder. Get rid of that. Same thing, go one, 
two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't have a ton of, it's not soup, right? I don't want to eat soup. I want to eat vegetables and protein with a sauce. And if the sauce doesn't have a lot of fat, like salsa or this, then I want to add fat, which we're going to do now with some Parmesan cheese. Get this little bowl that we showed you before, tear that out to zero. And we're going to add 80 grams. That's what we're going to record for both meals. So any given day, it's 40, right? Can't even remember what I'm doing. And of course, four calories a gram for this most cheeses. So there we've mixed it. We've got the cheese. It's got a big lump. Let's break that up. Can you see that? Stir it. And that's a lot of cheese, right? 40 grams, that's over two ounces, isn't it? Not two ounces would be 60. But it's a lot. So back to the fridge, food safety. Sportster Paul, analog diet at 173. Three more pounds to go. Stay tuned. See you next week. All right, catch you later. Bye. Thank you.